again, it's good to be back with you. Um, after a recent uh, video I posted on how to calculate uh, reaction forces and reaction moments on a cantilevered beam using the basic idea of statics, I got a question about what, what would happen, what would be different if the weight of the beam was not negligible. In the previous video I assumed the weight of the beam was small compared to the weight of the load. So let's see what happens when that's not true anymore. So I've got this set up right here. As I did before, this is a perhaps a professor in middle age who weighs 900 newtons, which is pretty close to 200 pounds, and sitting on a beam that's five meters long. That's a pretty, pretty long beam. I mean, that's uh, about 16 feet. And I'm saying now that the beam weighs 500 newtons all by itself. Okay? Before I said the weight of the beam was so low, it was essentially zero compared to that. Well, a beam that long, capable of supporting that load, may not be negligibly light. It may be heavy enough that we have to take the weight into account. Now, I've drawn the weight in the center here for a very specific reason. I've assumed that the weight of, or that the beam is uniform across its length. That's the cross section is the same everywhere. So if you were to cut up this beam into segments, every segment would be just like every other one. It's the same size and it's the same weight. So because it's uniform, the beam center of gravity is right there. And what we're going to do here is we're given all this stuff, find the reaction force at this end and the reaction moment at that end. Now just in case you're new to this, you may, you may not be, but in case you are new to it, this, these hash marks here uh, indicate that the beam is clamped at the end. It's fixed. So it can't move at that end. It can't rotate and it can't move up or, up or down. Essentially, it would be like if the beam was sunk into a block of concrete. Well, they aren't always, but a lot of times there's boundary conditions, and this is called a boundary condition, that are equivalent to this. No rotation, no, no displacement at that end. So that makes it a cantilevered beam. Now, when we're finding the, the, the uh, reaction force and the reaction moment, we're able to do something that you can't do if you're trying to find the stress along the beam. Okay, and I'll tell you about that here in a second. So what I'm about to show you works as long as all you're trying to find is the reaction uh, force and the reaction moment. Now, for a statics problem, there's a couple of, of steps. Step one, okay, you get a working diagram. And I'll write this quickly. Hopefully my writing isn't too bad. So step one, working diagram, that's what that is. That's a picture of what's, ha what's happening. Step two, okay, and I'll just write FBD for free body diagram. Okay, and we're going to draw that here in a second. It's a simplified, sort of more abstracted drawing that doesn't have all the details in it, but it does have all the forces and moments. Okay, and we'll work off our free body diagram. Three, equations of equilibrium. Equilibrium. I got to make sure I spell that right. It's one of those funny Latin words. Equilibrium. Okay. Equilibrium means it's not moving. This is static. The professor sitting on the end of the beam really wants that beam to be static. He doesn't want it to be moving. So we're going to find the equations of static equilibrium. And the last thing, if you can, can we see this here? Okay. Yeah, I guess we're okay. And the last thing is solve. You got to solve for something, or you wouldn't be doing the problem. So we've got the working diagram already done. Well, let's, what would the, the free body diagram look like? Okay, and I'll just, you now me. Well, uh, let's see, I'll call right FBD right there. I, I don't have the biggest uh, board here. So there's, okay, there's the weight of the payload, the professor, okay? I actually drew sort of kind of a little stick figure professor there. We've replaced that with just an arrow showing the load. This is what I mean when I say it's a little more abstract. Um, in the middle, here's this 500 newtons that is the weight of the beam. Okay. Now, if this is going to be in static equilibrium, two things have to happen. There has to be a counteracting force and a counteracting moment. So, there's the counteracting force, and I'll call that, it's in the way, um, the reaction force here. Free body diagram. There you go. There's the, the counteracting force, the reaction force. That's the force that this block of concrete or whatever it is has to apply to the beam to keep it static. But there also has to be a moment. 
Well, let's let's draw our, our axes over here. Can't do a problem unless you've got axes. Okay? Um, I'll use those most of the time unless I have some good reason not to. So if there is a counteracting force, a reaction force, there has to be a reaction moment or else this thing is going to spin. Well, we don't want that. We don't want to dump the professor off into whatever's below him. And I'm going to guess that the reaction moment goes that way. Well, these two moments are going to go in the negative direction against my coordinate system. So this one's probably going to have to go in a positive, direct, positive direction with my coordinate system, with you know, counterclockwise being positive. Okay, so we've got a free body diagram. We've got that done. So there's that. Next thing to do is we've got to write equations of static equilibrium. Some of the forces have to be zero. Some of the moments have to be zero. So there's no forces in the x direction. So for some of the forces in the y direction, I'll just work from left to right here. Well, there's the reaction force. I've got to put that in there. And I made that go up. And since up is positive, that's positive. Okay, minus 500 newtons minus 900 newtons as I go from left to right. Well, that looks good. Some of the moments also has to be zero. Now, I get to some moments about any point I want, all right? And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I don't think you're supposed to sneeze in the middle of videos. Sorry about that. Um, so some of the moments has to be zero. And I have to calculate the moments about some point. Now, it doesn't matter which point you use. Pick any point along that beam, and you'll get, assuming you execute the process correctly, you'll get the right answer. Well, last time I did that point right there, and I think I might have called that A for no other reason. I just needed to call it something. So I'll do that again so you can compare this video to the one that came before it. And I'll just put a little A right there. All right, so that moment I have to add in. Well, that's counterclockwise. So is that. My, my positive sign convention is counterclockwise. So it's going to be positive. I don't know what it is yet, but I'll find out. Now. That uh, force is going to make a negative moment with you know, about point A. And negative means it's, a, it's going, acting against that coordinate uh, system. It's going to be clockwise now instead of counterclockwise. So let's say 500 newtons times. Now, I, made, I said this was in the middle. So just to be clear, that's 2.5 meters. Okay. So that's 2.5 meters minus, now I've got another negative moment here. That's going to be 5, uh, do it the other way here, 900 newtons times 5 meters. I'll get out of your way here. Okay. All right, so there you go. Though this is some of the forces has to be zero, some of the moments has to be zero. Those are the equations of equilibrium. So I did that. Last thing to do, i got to solve for something, right? Well, obviously, I'm trying to solve for the reaction force and the reaction moment. So let's do this one first. It's pretty easy. Those two add up to 1,400 newtons. So if FR minus 500 minus 900 equals 0, then the reaction force has to be 1,400 newtons. Well, and that's not too hard to imagine. The reaction force better equal the force of the, the weight of the beam plus the weight of the guy sitting on the beam. If it was anything other than that, we'd be pretty worried. Okay, the last thing we need now, okay, is this. Now, that's if that all has to equal zero, this is going to be, uh, let's see, 1,250 newton meters plus 4,500. Ah, did that wrong. Newton meters, and that equals, let's see, make this sure, 5750. Okay, so I'll maybe underline that, underline that. So there you go. So let's, let's review real quickly what we've done. Drew a working diagram, turned that into a free body diagram, wrote out equations of static equilibrium, and then solve those equations of static equilibrium. Just the one thing, I guess, to keep in mind, this answer is pretty obvious.
Okay, this answer just has to be the weight of the beam plus the weight of the guy sitting on the beam. This one isn't obvious. I, I couldn't look at that and go, oh, well, obviously it's... Um, I had to work that out, all right? So when you get... Your, your, the whole point of learning to do uh, problems like this is to learn to do... Uh, or learn to deal with situations where the answer is not obvious. Many of you are going to go out and get good paying jobs, I hope, and your bosses are going to pay you because, in part because you can do things like this that are of value. So I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.